Hi everybody, Steve Griffiths here, developer of the MT Predictor software program. In today's MT Predictor video, I'd like to look at how we built a good trading case uh, for a nice long trade on the YM that unfolded yesterday, it was actually Friday the 17th of uh, February. It also shows why we don't uh, have MT Predictor as a black box trading system and how we build things together as uh, as we teach in our training webinars. But before we start uh, that, we'd like to, I'd like to go over the uh, risk disclosure and just remind you that all examples in these videos should be considered as hypothetical. No trades were taken. Uh, they are just shown for illustration and trading purposes only. Also, there's a risk of loss in trading and investing. All professional traders know that losses can and will and do happen. I'll say that again. Losses can and will and do happen. The trick is keeping the losses small. Right, let's have a look at <clears throat> Friday. So the trade setup I'd like to look at was on the YM, on this three minute chart, this TS3 buy setup. But let's go through the larger degree picture first on the other E-minis just to get an idea of where we sit. Um, as we're going into uh, the start of trading on Friday. Let's have a look at the <coughs> ES, um, or oh, I had to, let's go back to the three minute chart. <coughs> so how do we gauge uh, the large degree trends and large degree support and resistance areas? Well, we look to the higher time frames charts. Uh, we normally look for a time frame between three and five time frames higher. So if you're trading say 15 minute Forex, you'd look to the hourly chart, daily stocks you'd look to the weekly chart and because this is a three minute chart uh, a three minute chart you'd look to the 15 minute chart so let's go out to the 15 minute chart and we place our DPs on the chart remember these are leading indicators so as yesterday just uh, just as the open started and this new swing came down to here you could have gone back to the prior uh, previous pivot low which was here right mouse click do DP and that would have given you a support level on the chart. As you can see that nailed the very low of the day very nicely. If I go down to a three minute chart you can see that there it is 15 minute support that DP nailed the low of the day beautifully. We actually had a VS buy set up here if I right mouse click do the analysis that actually uh, <clears throat> came off the very bar of the low of the day and went right up to uh, just before uh, the close there for a nice 2.5 R profit. The only thing I don't like about VS setups is is quite often you get a high volume spike just after the open anyway. So I wouldn't have put much weight on that particular uh, uh, buy setup, uh, setup anyway. The best thing to look for here, <clears throat> if I clear this off, is because we were coming in on higher time frame support, the best thing we'll be looking for is an initial rally, an initial correction into a uh, an empty predictor buy setup to then go long for a potential um, holy grail. Uh, trade setup. The MTP trend was blue <clears throat> pretty much for the rest of the day indicating the larger view trend was up. But you can see there were no setups here on the ES. This is why it's important to follow the other markets as well. On the NQ the larger view trend was up as you can see. There was a, uh, a buy setup here. Right mouse click do analysis. As you can see this would have actually resulted in a losing trade. There was also a buy setup there but because we were looking for uh, long trades because we were coming in at 15 support, minute support on the ES and the same on the YM that we'll look, look at in a minute, we're probably only looking for buy setups. But I wanted to look at this one in the video because it's a losing trade setup. It's important to understand that losses can and will and do happen. This was MTP trend blue indicating the large group trend was up. You'd have gone long there. Remember we use correct position sizing, in this case less than 2% of a sample 20,000 US dollar account would have been going long 8 contracts, you'd have been taken in and then stopped out. This would have been a losing trade. <clears throat> this would have been uh, what we call a 1R loss or a minus 1R loss or 1 risk unit uh, loss. Let's go on to the YM, <clears throat> again go out to the higher time frame chart. There were two potential pivots to, to, to use here. This one, of which the market went through. So we'll take that one off. Going back to the previous one here, we'll put, place that one on. And as you can see, just like the ES, that would have actually nailed the very low of the day for you. So this is what we like when we have two things coming in, giving us the same picture. If we go to the three minute chart, there it is. <clears throat> there, nailing the low of the day for you very nicely. As I suggested in the ES, the thing we'd probably look to do is have an initial rally up, 
therefore we wouldn't be looking for that particular sell setup because here comes uh, because we're coming off a large degree support we'll be looking for initial rally initial correction down therefore this TS3 buy setup here would be a very good one to take because it's in the direction of the large degree trend MTB trend is blue therefore a good one to take right mouse click on the blue buy bar do the analysis and there would be your initial trade into the initial target for plus 2.5 R so a very uh, good trade there but were there any reasons why you could have actually held this trade a little bit further let's clear this all off let's put the high low close on from the previous day this is very neat because this shows you where we were in relation to the previous day now although this says outside gap down it's because it relates to where the uh, the market actually opened can you see the first three minute bar that bar there actually went back up into the previous day's range in other words it went above the previous day's low of uh, 536 so technically this wasn't an outside gap it was an inside gap an inside gap because the market traded within the previous day's <coughs> trading range which is the previous day's high and low in the first three minute bar inside gaps tend to fill what does that mean? It tends to go back to the previous day's close, which was highlighted there. That's why we have these levels on the chart. So can you see now why when we have this TS3 buy setup, it makes sense rather than looking to come out at the first target here, you could look to run it nearly into the close. Also, when the market hit this uh, <coughs> first target here, our MTP trend was strong. In other words, we were beyond our grey strength band. When this happens, we deem the market is strong and therefore we swap to our ATR stop to look to run the trade further. So rather than coming out at this WPT target, this profit target here, we'd have swapped to the ATR stop and we'd have held it into close up into this level. But of course, a couple of bars before that, we'd pretty much close the gap and therefore you'd probably want to be closing your long trade out there anyway. So a very nice trade setup, but can you see how it shows how we build the picture together with all our MT predictor analysis? Remember, MT predictor is not a black box system. We're not looking to you to just have the scanner open and just follow the scanner. And whenever you get a setup in the scanner, you just blindly just follow it without any idea of what you're doing. We want to try and piece together how the day is unfolding or likely to unfold. That's why we went through this looking at our large degree support and resistance zones. We looked at whether inside gaps or outside gaps. If I put the high low close on for the previous day, <clears throat> you can see here is the previous day's low. The ES, as it says in that message there, was an inside gap. Inside gaps tend to fill, therefore you're anticipating the market's going to go up into the previous day's close. We came in at 15 minute support, therefore you're anticipating the large degree trend was up and you'd be looking for buy setups. The same for the other markets. Remember, losses can unfold, so there's a losing trade we looked at as well. The best trade setup is after the initial correction into here for a TS3 buy setup. That then looked to hold that all the way into the close, and that's where you had a nice 4.8R profit. This TS3 sell setup was against our MTP trend and, our, and against <coughs> our um, analysis that the larger degree trend would probably be up on Friday. We adjusted the um, stop on this trade set up here for two reasons. First of all, because our MTP trend was strong. Therefore, we're anticipating the market's going to go further. Therefore, we're looking to run it further. And also, we're anticipating that the gap's going to close. And therefore, we probably want to come out just uh, about a tick below the previous day's uh, uh, close, which was there. But can you see how we put lots of pieces of analysis together to, to build a trading picture and as such give you confidence in your MT predictor analysis. Remember, this is not a black box system. It is a, um, we look at the trade setups and then decide which ones we want to uh, trade and how we want to trade them built, built on the uh, large degree trend direction and whether the pattern's clear. Remember, markets go in cycles. There'll be periods when the markets are not clear. There'll be periods when some patterns don't happen. For example, on the ES, <coughs> We didn't get any trade setups. So even though we nailed the low of the day with our 15 minute DP, there were no long trade setups on the ES because it was in a quiet period of the cycle. But the YM did, and as such, you've got a, a nice trade on the YM. Remember, the cyclical nature of trading is how I describe that. 
So yesterday or Friday was a very good example of an MT predictor trade setup that unfolded very nicely and also some of the other analysis we do in and around our trade setups to gauge the large degree trend and some other things like using uh, the previous day's gap uh, inside or outside gap as well.